Worthington to serve today? And what did you tell him? Welcome back. It's me again, Walter. Uh, act one can easily enough, but act two, act two is a tricky one. A murder has been committed, and now it must be solved. In some of my mysteries, I isolate the characters, say on an island, or on a mountaintop, or in the woods during the blizzard. The murderer cuts the phone lines, trapping everyone in there with him or her. In this type of situation, the murder is usually solved by an amateur sleuth among them, uh, Miss Marta or Jessica Fletcher wannabe. In others, such as this one, I bring in a homicide detective, a.k.a. Lieutenant Jamie McMillan. Now, if you've been keeping notes on how to commit a murder, you should have written down that you must provide your suspects with a motive and an opportunity to deal with the victim. Everyone in here had a motive to kill Edward, except for Peggy Sue, who stood, access, who stood to gain access to his fortune had he lived. Rotten luck. Not as rotten as Edward. As I was saying, all but Miss Dixie Cup had a motive to kill Edward, and they all had the opportunity to stab the man in the back. Literally. And in case you're wondering how we created that great special effect, Connie took a cake knife and hid it under a pile of napkins, and Roy took a magic knife handle and stuck it on Edward's back. Edward popped a blood capsule in his mouth and bit down. Simple, huh? But I digress. In Act 2, Lieutenant Jamie McMillan will search for clues, question suspects, and by its conclusion, find out who murdered Edward Worthington III. Now, keep your eyes and ears open, and who knows? Maybe you'll find out who killed Edward before she does. Now, on the show. before they get ink all over the furniture. Miss Beatrice has already finger painted the tabletop. <laughs> Clumsy me! <laughs> Don't fret, Miss Beatrice. Miss Vickers will paint it for you. I've been dying to scratch. Hives, nerves. I regret the inconvenience, but it's standard procedure that people regret all suspects of the crime scene. <clears throat> if we're excused, I'm going to my suite to cleanse my digits. May I suggest the guests gather in the parlor next door? There's a half bath in the hallway. The staff can wait in the kitchen until you're ready for us. That's a good idea. So, what would you like to know, Lieutenant? Let's see, Miss Bromley. You said you were Mr. Worthington's personal secretary. How long have you been serving in that capacity? About six months, I guess. I mean, I've worked for Worthington Enterprises for a couple of years, but when Edward's personal assistant retired last June, he pulled me from the secretarial pool and gave me her job. Obviously, your relationship became very personal. If you announced an intention to marry you tonight, what can I say? It happens. I would have made Edward a good wife, Lieutenant. Better than that ice cube he was married to. A leg of the cheese will look like you'd be frostbacked. If I had to guess, I'd say cheese or murder, Lieutenant McMillan. Possibly, but it's been my experience that the jilted spouse often strikes up the competition. In this case, you. You mean you think she would have gone after me with that pig sticker? Oh, golly, the very idea just gives me the shivers. <sighs> Mrs. Worthington might well have killed her husband. I'm just saying. There are other possibilities. I have to admit, you're right. I'd rather stitch my lips shut with a sewing machine than say anything bad about anybody, but a labor's brother, Tony, could have done it for her. He's a charmer, but I wouldn't trust him any further than I could throw a pig skin with the pig still in it. And Roy and Lauren had good reasons to kill Edward, too. He was going to fire both of them. Eddie threatened to bring criminal charges against Roy, as well as report Lauren's dealings with that writer Jameson to the Bar Association. So, I noted, his sister, ex-wife, daughter, and servants all had motives to end his life as well. Mrs. Phillips might have committed the crime to protect her husband. If there's anything worse than having no suspects in a murder case, it's having too many. You're the only one in this house who stood to lose. Now, 
not game by Mr. Worthington's death. You're the only one I feel sure didn't stab the man. Oh, thanks ever so much. And can I go home? I'm about to absolutely collapse from exhaustion. Before I do anything else, I have to look over the classified ads. The classified? Well, I guess Lieutenant, when I lost Edward, I lost my job. And if the is going to take charge of Worthington Enterprises, you can bet your boots the first thing she'll do is give me the ass. Oh, I wish I hadn't said it like that. I gave myself the shivers again. The goose just walked over my grave. I beg your pardon? That's what we say in the South when we get the shivers. A goose just walked over my grave. It's a quaint expression, though I can't see how anyone would think poultry to the hereafter. <laughs> I gather it's used to express the feeling of impending doom. I guess so. In that case, I bet a whole flock of geese stomped over Edward's cemetery plot a few hours ago. Anyway, can I leave you, Tim? Not yet. I might have more questions for you after I talk with the others. Sorry. That's okay. I'm happy to help you whatever way I can. I'll be in the parlor if you need me. You wanted to see us, Lieutenant? Yes, please see it, please. I have a few more questions regarding what took place last night. I don't know how we can help you. We were in the kitchen most of the evening. It's what took place in the kitchen that I need to know about. Mm. At this point, I'm specifically interested in finding out about the murder weapon. That knife? My knife? What about my knife? Where's it usually kept? In a butcher's block? It's part of the set. It's Sells up there, though. It's Ida's favorite kitchen tool. That's true. I use it to slice and dice everything. Not including people, if that's what you're thinking. I'm not thinking anything at the moment. A good sharp knife is hard to come by. Can I have it back when the case is closed? Or is that too morbid? That's too morbid. I assume you use knife while preparing dinner tonight, Ida? Naturally. I chopped up up some fresh chives to sprinkle on the wet potatoes. And uh, what else, yes, sir? Roast beef, gravy, Brussels sprouts, uh, salad, congealed jello, and fruit. Actually, so first, I can see title of the play, The Blood, like jello and congeals. But then I thought, nah, that's kind of gross, so don't play. <laughs> so you did serve a salad dressing, say, oil or vinegar? No, ma'am. Mr. Winston could not stand lettuce. I heard him say once if he had meant to eat green, leafy things, he would have been a rabbit. <laughs> I see. What did you do with the knife after the meal was prepared, Ida? Washed it, of course, along with the oven utensils in a dishwasher. Mm -hmm. And who touched it after that? I did. Ida told me to take it out of the dishwasher and place it on a tray with the sausage and horse and things for the birthday cake. It was so little damp, so I wiped it off there with a dish towel. And nobody else touched it after that? There were any fingerprints except possibly 
yours or traces of food on it when you brought it in here? No, ma'am. It wasn't out of our sight the whole time. That's what I wanted to know. You have all been very helpful. If it's a matter of any of our fingerprints being on the knife. No, it isn't that, um, Hollister. The only discernible prints belong to Mr. and Mrs. Worthington, whom we know touched it. I see. Then how have we helped? I'll explain later. I hope. For now, I need to take a quick look around the kitchen, if I may. As you wish. This way, Lieutenant. Did you kill father? No, dear. 
I can't take credit for that, though I've threatened to lots of times. I know I was always cutting them down, but I didn't do it, literally. I hope you can convince Lieutenant McMillan of that. She seems like a pretty smart gal. The lieutenant should realize that if I had been going to knock off Edward, I'd have done it years ago when he left us to marry Allegra, the sharp woman. She'd have a pretty hard time proving that I killed my ex in a fit of anger that lasted 10 years. If anyone could hold a grudge that long, you could, Justine. Except you wouldn't have needed a knife. With that sharp tongue of yours, you could have licked him to death. Speak of the devil, and she appears. Still here? I'm surprised you didn't make the most of the opportunity and run out to buy a new black dress. With what? You know I don't have any money of my own, and I'm sure Edward's accounts will be frozen for quite some time. Good point. Speaking of money, the fact he was supporting Deborah and me should be proof I didn't kill him. I'm not dumb enough to slay the goose that was laying the golden eggs. But tonight, he did threaten to cut off your income. I know, he's done that for years. Every time I ticked him off, which was often, if he did stop my alimony checks, I might consider homicide, but not until then. The very idea that foul oh, let me explain. What's going on? A meeting of Edward's wives, past, present, and future. <laughs> we were just waiting for you to join us. What was going on out there? This snake in the grass, Lauren. Oh, Peggy Sue, oh, I have never been a wet hand. That beat it. I tried to tell Lauren that I'll be looking for a new job now that Edward's dead. She offered me a lot of her firm in exchange for betraying Edward's secrets. If Edward can see what Lauren tried to do, he'd be spinning in his grave. If he were in it. How could Father see Lauren if he was in his grave? Oh, you know what I mean. Peggy Sue, I've had romantic feelings for Edward for a long time. That's why I made the divorce papers ironclad. Well, well, it seems Edward's trusted lawyer had yet another motive to murder him. For once, I have to agree with you, Allegra, although it hurts like a toothache to admit. No, I want to kill Edward just because I too have romantic feelings for him. You slippery snake. You had your chance with Edward years ago. You just didn't age well, honey child. Well, at least I'm not poor. That's what drew you to your boss, wasn't it? His millions. What if it was? I am tired of being poor. As my grandma always told me, love is fleeting, honey, but money lasts forever. Are you sure you're not descended from Scarlett O'Hara? <laughs> Teach him a lesson. Miss Vickers, you shouldn't have. He can't say I didn't warn him. Oh, don't mind us. We're just passing through. Come on. But, but, I wonder what that was all about. I don't believe she did that. <laughs> Tony, your nose. It's nothing compared to what my eyes are going to look like. Maybe next time you'll listen to me. Come on, I'll wet a towel in a half bath and clean it off. Doesn't anybody use the front door in this house? When I lived here, we used the front door all the time. We're all back in here. Are we playing a new game? Oh no, Auntie. We wouldn't dream of playing another game without you. That's sweet, Deborah. One of these days, I'm going to surprise you and win one. Are there any nibbles in here? I was saving room for birthday cake, so I didn't eat much dinner. And then, nobody cut it. I noticed you picked at your roast beef and didn't even touch your whipped potatoes. Oh, there were some mints in here earlier. No. Where did they go to? Never mind. I'll get you something. Come, sit on the sofa, Envy. All right. If you'll excuse me, I have to make an important phone call. Gladly. If I had to guess, I'd say she's going to go tell that rider fella the good news. Good news? What good news? That Edward has gone to meet his maker. 
Although, on second thought, I doubt that's where he's headed. <laughs> Anyways, Lauren is a very lucky lawyer. Not only is the man who's gonna have her disbarred dead, that Jameson guy will probably pay her a fortune for a first-hand account of Edward's murder. With a climax like that, Edward Worthington III's biography will be a huge bestseller. I told you Lauren was a snake. You won't get an argument from me. Did someone ring? Yes, Edwina. My aunt is a little hungry. Could you see if there's something in the kitchen you could prepare? Of course, Miss Deborah. It may take me a minute, though. Now, please pretend you're searching through everything in the kitchen. The cabinets, refrigerator, everywhere. I'll see what I can. Thank you. She's searching the kitchen? What about four? Maybe she's hungry, too. You <laughs> should have looked more closely at the label. I'm sorry, honey. It was an accident. Perhaps I should see doctor. I don't know what he could do. Oh! Hello again, everybody. What's the matter? You look a little green around the gills, Roy. I have, still have, a ferocious headache, and we couldn't find the aspirin to get sweet bathroom. So my wife decided to rummage through like rest medicine chest. Stupid me took the pills. She handed me before looking at them more closely. It wasn't aspirin? Well, no. I didn't see any aspirin, but there was this vial of big orange pills that looked like the prescription strength mugs and Roy keeps at home for his headaches. I gave him those before I read on the label that they were Premarin instead. <laughs> I only gave you four. <laughs> Premarin? What's Premarin? Double strength estrogen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cloudy, if Roy gets a sudden urge to try your dresses, you'll know why. Oh, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Like to join us? Oh, good. Maybe having something on my stomach will absorb the you know. <laughs> it's hot in here. Why is it suddenly so hot in here? Trust me, it'll pass. Uh huh. Isn't that better? I can't breathe. So, which would you rather do, breathe or bleed? I guess I'll manage. I just need to sit down. What happened, Tony? Miss Vickers poked me in the nose. That mean old thing. If I were you, I'd stretch her eyes out. <laughs> Sorry, Alenka. But Roy took some of your preparin by mistake. I thought it was Motrin. Preparin? What's preparin? Female hormones. Why don't you just go tell everybody? Vickers, 
all of the household seems to have migrated back into the living room, except Miss Tate. Will you find her, please, and ask her to join us? Yes, Lieutenant. That snake slithered into the parlor a few minutes ago. Please help yourselves. You want to see me, Lieutenant McMillan? Yes. Join us, please. Staff, if you all may as well. Lieutenant McMillan, I have a terrible headache. I don't feel at all well. Something you <laughs> ate, no doubt. <laughs> if you're ready to question us again, I'd like to volunteer to go first and get it over with. That's fine, Mr. Phillips, but I'm not going to question you. They are. <gasps> okay, so earlier I said that Lieutenant McMillan would question all everyone, but for time's sakes, I'm going to have the audience help out. If you were handed the colored slip, I'll be around in a second, and I'll be allowing me to ask a question or two to one of the suspects. Just state their name, and then the question. Ms. Vickers? Yes, oh, sir. How long do you work for Edward? I worked for Edward for like, my whole life. My mother worked for his family before me, and her mother before hers. And why are you a housekeeper? Well, I was just born to the family job, you know? Just keep up the family business. Thank you. I'll let you Why did you stay with Edward if you knew he was cheating on me with Nancy? Well, as I mentioned, I only had the slight suspicion he was fooling around with that sudden bell. But, I mean, it wasn't really a good enough reason to give up my Armani, now was it? Why do you despise Beatrice so much? Are you kidding? Have you seen the old bloom? Thank you. Deborah, why are your college grades so bad? You see, my problems mostly consist of trying to decide what party I'm going to go to each night, so I don't have much time for classes or studying or school in general. And what is your relationship with your mother? Well, my mother truly thinks of me as her best friend because she doesn't have any real friends, but she's just my mother. Okay, thank you. Uh, who is the next colors? Thank you. 